Hi, my name is CJ and this is my RC channel. Let's start with rear suspension because that's a little more complicated with the um, with the motor and everything. Okay, we're going to need to mount these. And those probably go like that. It makes sense that they would have the stop at the end there. Um, there we go. So, there's a little bit of a gap there. Yeah, that would have to be a fairly thin shim. Might, might tinker with that. Okay, and this. Okay, this has this screw head, uh, this tapped hole here. Um, this is just like the uh, the front end has one, but that's milled in. Right there, just like on the Traxxas, um, it's the uh, the locator point for the, it's either the front or the rear most uh, attachment point. So this needs to get screwed in here like that. And to line it up, they've got a little pin machined in here, right there, that goes in the, uh, the hole that's not drilled all the way through. So like that and that is going to be an M3 and a small one at that counter sunk yeah and I'm really glad I've got these all these uh, different screw sizes because it's really going to help keep the weight down on this and, you know, improve just general fit and finish. I could use a longer screw, but it really doesn't need it. This isn't a super high stress point right here. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to hang with that. I may revisit it later, but for now, I think I'm good. Okay. I'm really going to be out of hardware when I'm done here. <laughs> Okay, let's see what we've got here. Now these are suspension mounts, so we want a, a good bit going into the metal, and that is perfect. I mean, that's going to go, uh, you know, 85% of the way through the metal. We don't want it sticking out, so that is the perfect size. So, okay, this is interesting. Okay, things to pay attention to. Where is the other arm? There we go. Okay, if you notice, look at where the hole is drilled in here. Okay, it's down near the bottom edge. And if you look, turn it 180 degrees, the holes are coming out high over here. So these holes are drilled at an angle. Okay, that's giving us some kick up. Okay, um, basically like rear caster. And uh, so this tells us which direct, which side these are gonna go on because if I flip them upside down, I've got downward kick or the opposite. Um, so in other words, the, the angle of the pinions is down in the front, okay? If I, switch them around the other way 
excuse me, um, it's, it's this way. So this way or this way. And this is the way we, we want. We want the equivalent of a little bit of caster. Um, but there might be a, geom uh, a geometric reason, I should say, to do it the other way. Um, uh, my brain is a little frozen at this point. I've been doing this for like three hours now, so um, I can't think of why you would want to do that. You know what? I'm going I'm to pause the video. I'm going to take five minutes. I'm going to look at a couple of my books on suspension and uh, figure out what's the best direction to put these. Okay. Um, I was 99% sure, but I wanted to check. Um, we want the uh, angle to be up, the kick, and uh, technically it is called anti-squat. It's caster in the front, it's anti-squat in the rear. They basically do the same thing. Uh, depending on the angle and which direction of the angle, it either makes the suspension want to uh, not squat, which this car does have some problems with or has in the past, um, where the, uh, and, and you've seen this in some of the videos, and it was more suspension related that the, uh, you know, under acceleration that the back end would, you know, go down hard, the front end would rise, and it would uh, accelerate like that, and that's kind of taking away from your acceleration. Um, so having the anti-squat in there is going to, um, is going to make the, the more anti-squat you have, and, you know, technically these could be wedged to uh, change that either more or less. Uh, but in any event, that aside, um, the anti squat is going to prevent or help prevent the rear end from from dropping down. Um, and there are, of course, trade offs. There are always are downsides to any positive suspension change you make. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bolt these in place. Wanted to feel something. Okay, I was just curious to what those actually felt like as far as weight. So I went ahead and just ordered a new servo. I'm going to call and get a return order on that uh, Savox tomorrow. But um, I went with an Eco or Echo. Um, I put one of those in the uh, Capra, if you recall, if you've watched that build video. And I like it. It's a nice servo. It's... Um, about uh, 10 grams, or excuse me, it's about 13 grams lighter than this servo, uh, which is a decent amount um, to knock off. And uh, it's not gonna have <laughs> the mile of wire that this one has. Um, and uh, it's waterproof, and it's um, about 400 grams of torque, uh, and it's a high voltage servo, and it's all metal gears, so uh, good all around, uh, about $70, I think, $78, something like that. Anyway, you can look that up if you're interested. I'll, uh, maybe I'll put together a parts list on this. If any of you guys are interested, if you want to know where all this stuff comes from and where you can buy it, um, let me know and I'll, uh, try to throw together a link list for you. If nobody wants it, you know, I'm not going to bother. It's a lot of work, but, uh, if, uh, if you're interested in building this and uh, you want to know where to get the stuff, let me know. So, yeah, that just uh, drops right in like that. And 
Let's see, those are threes, M3s. And I've got some titaniums on the way. While I was ordering the servo, I ordered a few more uh, packs of uh, screws. So they're not too expensive. Depends on where you get them. I've gotten a lot of the stuff from Lunsford, and uh, I've gotten some of it off of Amazon. Interestingly enough, there were a few sellers on there that had some uh, some bulk packs of uh, like M3 uh, button heads um, in various lengths, and they were selling uh, 50 count packs for uh, about twenty dollars. It's my experience that. Titanium hardware, you know, the stuff that we would use in our hobby, M3, M4, in assorted sizes, generally runs around a buck a piece. Okay, I was worried about that. I was worried those were a little too long. They must have gone through. I think I need to switch batteries. Yep. Okay, no damage done. Basically, what the screws did is they went through the bottom of the block there and we're basically uh, just holding that gear from rotating so um, let's see what do I have here that will fit for the time being well, those will do I'm just gonna put on steel hell with it pins come in. Not a big fan of C clips, but I think it'll be okay. Okay, let's uh let's do a little comparison on these kingpins, the uh, titanium versus stock. Let's see, and uh, stock kingpins are where? So, a pair of the stock kingpins is six and a half grams. And the titaniums are 3.6. So, a little over half the weight. Um, that's nice. If you did that with all the hardware, that would become pretty dramatic. Now, I would hang on to my stock uh, equip hardware, the stock kingpins, and here is why. Um, they do bend, they get bent in crashes, and uh, if you don't have the $40 or so to run out and buy new titanium ones, it's good to have your old steel kingpins handy. This one didn't want to go through, and I think there's a little bit of maybe flashing from where this screw was drilled 
yeah, looks like. Okay, um, I should have a metric drill bit that'll work for that. Okay, let's see what size these are. These. So let's get our three millimeter. Just confirm that. Now it looks like it's a three two. Yep. I'm just going to go real gentle on this. Just clean out that area right there. There we go. Okay, perfect. So watch out for that minor thing, but make sure you, you know, use the right drill bit. You're just trying to clean out where the um, uh, tapping was done for the threads for that grub screw. Now I'm not sure if I'm gonna use a grub screw or if I'm gonna use a retainer plate back here to anchor this. Um, I'd rather not use a grub screw because I don't wanna mar up the titanium. Not that you can see it, it's just I don't wanna put a bend in it or anything. Okay, so. Looking good as far as that goes. Um, rear bumper. So let's see how that fits on here. Yeah, that'll work. Um, I might have to drill those a little bit to make this come flush. Okay, if we slide this in place or start sliding it in place we run up against the um well no that should work yeah no need to put in the grub screws so we'll worry about that when we get down to it So, um, let's take a look at our rear drive shafts. And we have two pairs. Um, one is uh, 0.5 degrees and the other is 1.5 degrees. Question is which is which. I'm looking for some kind of marking on them. And I'm not seeing. Uh, wait a minute, right there. Okay. You can maybe see it. Right there. Depends on how the light is. Is this 1.5 degrees? And, um,. I think there's already some uh, rear toe built into the arm, so I'm going to start with the 1.5 and see what it looks like when I put it on the on the uh, on the truing board. And uh, if it's not enough, I'll go ahead and just swap them over. It's just a, a few bolts, but I am going to cut them loose. Put them in the parts box. Okay. And do they tell us which is left or right? Yeah. Okay, there's a small, in the little cutaway right here, there's a small letter R and a letter L. So, right, left.
you can see right off the bat that this is a lot sturdier than this one. It's, it's thicker. Um, and it also gives us uh, six different uh, mounting positions for our control rod here. So we've got uh, a lot more suspension tunability there. Now we're going to need this at the same time because we're not going to be using these. These would be for one tenth scale uh, 12 millimeter hex wheels, whereas uh, we've got new versions of these to go with our 17 millimeter kit here. we do not need. Those are plastic and we are not going to need them anyway. Looks like we got some shims so we can tighten stuff down. Now, I've got ceramic bearings in there, or I think I do. It'll be interesting to uh, see about that, too. Let me uh, just disconnect this. And this is where we're going to be weighing uh, the uh, one of these drive linkages here and seeing what it weighs out as for comparison. We'll see if we're losing weight or gaining weight or more or less staying the same. So let's pull out these grub screws, smaller one. Okay. Now that's going to be the entire linkage. Let's include the grub screw. really doesn't matter much it's more a curiosity uh, okay the rear linkage weighs in at 47 grams so now we're gonna have one of these one of these a pair of these Forty-three grams, so we're saving five grams. Okay, and that's going to be ten grams total at the rear. So, you know, if we're lucky, we'll make up the difference in the plastic body to the aluminum chassis, <laughs> and we'll end up with a zero-sum game here. But that's okay. Um, you know, the idea was to, you know, kind of do this whole experiment and hopefully really tighten down the suspension. And uh, so, if that happens then I'll be really really happy okay I doubt that either of the bearings in there are gonna go with this let me see what I've got here okay. I'm really liking this uh, this Protec RC Premier white grease. It's better to put on too much in at the assembly phase for these and uh, make sure that you've got grease all over the moving surfaces. Now, we don't have a retaining screw for these. And I will explain why. Right through. 
There we go. Um, we don't need a retaining screw because the pin goes through either of the two holes, north, south, or east, or west, however you want to look at that. Um, and instead of having like a retaining ring or a grub screw, it is designed to slide inside the wreath of the bearing, and so the pin cannot go anywhere. It is held in, but if you take this off, that pin can drop on you. So, you know, keep that in mind if you do service in the field, uh, because you could very easily lose the pin. Getting a few spares and keeping them handy might not be a bad idea for just such an eventuality. Now, this is where things are going to kind of help tighten up here, is that you notice that we've got this, uh, this out drive here that actually goes through our bearings. And now we have our hex, which is going to go on here. And let me just confirm the location of the, yeah, that's right, the grub screw goes down through the center. So, line up the hole, slide the pin through, okay, make sure it's equal across both sides, and then we take this big grub screw here, and I'm going to get a little Loctite on here, we definitely don't want to grease on there. And, uh, and then this is going to screw right down through the center of that out drive. And this is going to make for a much, much more uh, sturdy, or not sturdy, because that implies strength. I'm talking about accuracy. Um, the uh, Now don't overly crank down on that pin. You don't want it coming out, but you don't want to bend it so it's misshapen inside of here and you can never get it out without ripping the whole thing apart. You'll find yourself buying a brand new kit. And that's another reason to make sure you put in that Loctite so that you don't have to worry about that grub screw coming out on you. I had a wheel fall off during one of my uh, heats. Um, these adapters that I've got on here, the uh, the retaining bolt came right off. Now, notice the difference between these two, how much this thing sticks out, and it's got this natural tendency to, it's just not as, um, not as tight as, uh, as this setup here. So... And I'm going to be using the bottom hole because I want to lower the car on the suspension. So we're going to take our out drive. And where are the... Uh, I guess they want us to use the original pins for the out drives. Maybe. Let's see if they fit. I don't see any in amongst the stuff we have here. And it's kind of surprising that they don't provide them, but they do screw in. Yep, that's going to be what we do. And you can see how light this thing is, the way it's been shaved and uh, you know, narrowed here and, and cut away and they've really lightened these little drives up. Okay. Deal. So this is where we start getting into our other kingpins. Let's just measure those up for kicks, weigh them up. Okay. So, here's one of our rear pins. 2.1 grams. 
and 1.06. So again, half the weight. This one's actually less than half. Always make sure, there we go, always make sure that C-clips are properly seated, that they can rotate. And this is where we are going to lose a little more weight. Um, move this over here. Well, I'm going to need to lube this dog bone up real good, but... Um, let me take this off first. Okay, turnbuckles. God, I just love banging my head into this camera mount today. And you know what? They were nice enough to give me a turnbuckle for the front steering linkage. And I've actually been having a few thoughts about that linkage. And uh, I'll go over that with you guys a little later. Okay. We've got... Okay, these long ones are going to be for the fronts. And the shorter ones are for the rear. Yep. Got it. Okay. Best turnbuckle wrench on the planet. nice thing is these are already threaded so I just need to make sure I put them in going in the correct directions with the new ones and these are a little beefier but it should uh, tap in just fine so that would be this one easiest way to do this is going to be just to bolt them in place and uh, hit them with the wrench. They really don't mark that well for us. I really wish they would have done better on that, but it's okay. Anyway, let's do a comparison here. Okay. Steel turnbuckle. It's 3.22 grams. Versus 2.24, so... So the rears, okay, I'm going to kind of add some of this stuff up. I wish I'd kept notes on all the little things I've been weighing up till now, like the, uh, uh, the kingpins and stuff. But uh, anyway, what really matters is the end result. So you pretty much know, <clears throat> excuse me, that anything that um, was replaced by titanium is going to be about half the weight. Also, I have no setup for these new rear pieces here. So out of the holes that I have to choose from, I'll probably go for the low center of the three and see where that you know like exercise the suspension on on the uh, tuning board and see what what changes I get and then go from there as far as making alterations so I need to grease this up Pretty well coated.
At some point, I'm considering doing a series on suspension tuning. Um, I have a, a lot of CAD experience, and I've got some experience in 3D. And I was thinking about uh, taking a, a 3D uh, tool called Blender and um, create some 3D suspension representations that are animated and articulated and uh, that way I can kind of narrate and uh, demonstrate um, what changes do. Uh, in other words, if you uh, change the length of this linkage, if you raise it on the inside or raise it on the outside um, or both, you know, what, what are you getting out of that? What does that happen? what geometric change does that have on the suspension? Um, and I forgot to put these shims in, which I should be putting them in between each side of these, but I'll do that a little later. Um, let's see, in the meantime, uh, wrench, so. I'm just kind of eyeballing this for the moment because it's, you know, it's all, it's got to go on the tuning board anyway. So it's probably a little overboard, but there we go. I'll leave it there. So this actually is really easy. I was thinking this was going to be more difficult, but it's really not because I'm using the existing uh, um, ends. I'm not having to uh, thread virgin plastic and that would have been a lot more difficult. Okay, so I can set that down for the moment. Set these aside. And let's do the other side of the suspension. And that's, yeah, that's the side with the threads. drives. Can anyone see what I've done wrong? Just offhand. Should be pretty obvious. Uh... <laughs> hey, it's not a big deal. I just need to take off uh, two screws and uh, lift the diff up and slide in this drive here. So <laughs> Silly me. You really want to make sure these little barrels are greased well. Because they are getting some really high RPMs. Inner bearing, outer bearing is in. And okay, now there is a little notch, and I forgot to mention that. Um, if you can see that little notch carved in there, you want that to face up when you slide this pin in. 
Uh, that's just going to be for the grub screw. I may need one less of those uh, shims. Yeah, I think I need to pull one. Doesn't quite want to let me get the... Uh, there we go. Didn't want to let me get the pin through. There we go. Pin is through. Okay, remember, Loctite on this grub screw. And don't over tighten. Now, if I was running this off road and I wanted maximum ground clearance, I would use the upper hole for the uh, pinion mount here. But since this is for road racing, I need the other one. I need the lower one to lower the car, thus rate by raising the axle. Great. I'm kind of going overboard on this at the moment because I'm going to slide it in and roll it around a bit and then I'll pull it out and wipe off some of the extra like I did last time. Because I want to make sure I've got, you know, a decent coating on the inside of this uh, out drive here. There we go. Now, if you ever switch those, like you decide, oh, I want to make it a little higher in the rear or whatever, uh, you can't just do that in a vacuum. You would need to uh, reformulate your linkage locations as well to go with that change. So I'm doing bottom row center, just as a baseline. Okay. Wait a second. Nope. Switch. Dummy. Should have thought of that before I... Okay. Um, you guys should all be familiar with turnbuckles at this point if you've watched any of my videos. Uh, or any of my builds, um, turnbuckles have a little notch in them. And these, it's not very obvious, um, but you can, it's a little more visible on this one. Um, on these, it's more like a little bit of a bulge or a little bit of an hourglassing shape. In any event, um, you want those all facing one way. It doesn't matter whether it's left or right as long as it's consistent throughout the car. And ideally, it should be consistent through all of your kits. That way you know that to bring, you know, bring the eyelets together, I turn this way. To tighten, I go this way. To loosen, I go the other way. And that goes for everything. And that if, that, if you do it the same way on all of your cars and on every linkage, it makes your life so much easier. Because when you're at the track, the last thing you need to be thinking about is which direction do I turn this one to make this go which way? And am I going the right way? And, you know, wait, this car has them facing the right-hand side. That's right. You know, that kind of stuff. You don't need that hassle. There's enough trying to just figure out how to tune your suspension. I really need to swap the battery here. Not sure I have one charged. out here. I'm just going to put this to charge right now. I'm going to pause the video for a moment. Okay, I've got that charging. Of course, that's not going to help me right now, but... Need 
to put shorter bolts in here. As you can see, they're coming through there, but they work great for these. It's nice to have them going solidly all the way into that plastic. I need to remember to put shims on this side here as soon as I'm done with this. I may need to move the motor mount. Yeah, I'm not going to get this thing where I want it that way. Shouldn't have tried. Take it off all together. <laughs> okay. Things to remember if I ever want to service that center diff, I've really got to take some stuff apart. Because that gear's got to drop into this slot here, which means I've got to be able to raise this dip, rear diff assembly a little bit, at least. Oh, wow. Okay. Since that's such a mission critical item, I'm going to put a little more Loctite on. Again, don't tighten all the way yet. Wow, that just clears in there, doesn't it? like there's a little space that that can move forward and back and speaking of shims There we go, that's beautiful. Let's go ahead and put this on for now. I may be replacing this assembly with a different drive shaft. It's gonna depend on a few things. One of those being, is it actually better or not? Two shims worked on the other side. Three was one too many. Let's try three and see if it's one too many over here. And remember, the little notch goes up. And three is one too many here. Even though these things are paper thin, probably like 0.1 millimeters. That's called tolerances. So 
sometimes the best way to separate these is with the tip of an exacto knife so now I can save those you definitely don't want to throw them away because as things wear in you may find that you need another one or even a couple more and there we go that makes it nice and snug and that's something lacking from the other system was the ability to adjust that I mean I could have probably done it on my own they just didn't provide for it the trick there is finding the right size shims and usually somebody has them you just got to do a search you know um, having a, a set of calipers so you can measure things out so you can really see what you need um, you know how big is it uh, the inner diameter outer diameter things like that outer diameter doesn't always matter but sometimes it does for example when we are we're um, doing the little shims uh, underneath here for the uh, uh, the the servo um, I mean the um, uh, the ball bearing inner reeses uh, for these swing arms here um, we wanted to make sure that these little barrels weren't touching the uh, the outer reese so we needed a spacer in there so these I'm going to put in a little baggie I think I've got a, a little ziplock see this is why like I use, when I go through stuff and you know you'll get a, a bunch of parts in a bag and there'll be a little ziplock bag a lot of times I save those those over there and those will go into a parts box for the car okay uh, I did the shims everything looks good back here I'm not gonna do the motor mount just yet let's go ahead and move on to the front suspension I hope you enjoyed this video Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.